Hello and welcome back to the East Manchester Experiment. Um, and things are going very well, as you may have guessed from the title of this episode. Um, there was We had the win against Glossop North End, that was our last um, live comm. Since then we had three consecutive draws, which you know was obviously not ideal, but I was pretty happy. And then the last game um, of, of that run, we actually we tried to go for the win. It would have been another, another draw, but I thought, let's just go for this. Um, and they got a 90 second minute equaliser. It happens, it's fine, that's not too much of a problem. Since then, though, three wins out of four. Really, really impressed with the, uh, the performances from the guys. It took a long time, as you can see, for anyone other than Smith to score, but once Casey had scored, slightly opened the flood floodgates and other people started scoring some goals, which is good to see. Troy Whitcomb obviously took a little while to get going. Hopefully the two games in two, two goals in two games means that he is sort of underway now. And we're here for the Team Solent game in the FA Trophy primary uh, preliminary round. Um, it's a game that we should win. Um, it's certainly not an easy game, but it's a game we should win. Uh, but the FA Trophy does seem to me to be very much worth um, the the, uh, the money that I'm going to get. Two and a half, two and a half thousand for winning just this game, and then that goes up every round. So if we can win a few of those rounds, then that's a significant sum of money that we can get into the coffers. So hopefully that's something we can go further in. I'm not going to do the Whitby Town game. I will be back for one of the league games. I haven't quite decided which yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the Team Solent game, and then I'm going to play it by ear. I'm just going to come back for a game that I feel like might be a good game. Uh, and I'll base that on all sorts of factors. Fitness of players will be a, p a key part of that. Um, and looking at that, that may well mean that the Bridge Celtic game could be a good one to go for. Where are they in the table? Yeah, you see, they're not far away from us. If we can do well over the next few games, that could well be a really good game, that Stalybridge Bridge game. But we'll have the Team Silent game today anyway, um, and then hopefully we will be back with you shortly. So here we can see today's squad. I think this is the one we're going to go for. We are missing uh, two, uh, both of our wingers are missing today. Jazz Casey out for a few weeks and Tim McInerney suspended. Uh, I think that was yellow cards rather than a red. Um, so this is what we've got today. Um, David Lundstrom is going to play on the left wing. He seems to me to be a very good choice there, I think. Uh, I do want to play him as an inverted winger because that's certainly his best position. Um, I do like this. It's one of my favourite features. This is this possibility to change players' roles depending on who they are. So I've got a different player there, so I can have a different um, role being played, which is very, very helpful. I wonder if Moran needs to do that. I might have him on defensive winger just because he's not going to be that good. I might as well sort of keep him not too, um, not too defensive. And with that in mind, Jellyman, I'm going to have him going further forward. Um, again, that's really just as a one-off. Um, I will be back as a full-back next game, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that's where we are for this game. Um, been quite impressed with various players, like Okoro, who doesn't seem to be very suited to left to left back role, but has done a very good job there. He certainly played really well uh, in the last game. Uh, that last game, that 2-1 win against Corwin Bay. We held out nicely after that. We, we scored with 10 minutes to go and held out really nicely. It was good to see. Um, some really good performances all round from the team there. So here we go with the game against Team Solent in the FA Trophy. And they're warming up. Here we go. So Javan Smith, obviously our top goal scorer. Lundstrom, I think, is our star player. That's an interesting one. Not sure I would have agreed with that. But he's certainly improving. I'd like to see those green arrows. I wonder if are they, is that sustained? I'm not sure. Uh, so it's about 100%. Changes. Uh, but it's not a huge about. There's actually some some that have come down as well. So it's, his physicals have come down a bit. Um, so despite some improvement, as it's not uniform. I'm not convinced he's anywhere near a star player. We'll see. Hopefully, this is a game that we can win, and we're off. Ram picks it up in midfield. Uh, again, Jellyman on the outside. Can he get the cross in? No, but Moran might. Uh, Whitcomb scores. Troy Whitcomb into some really good form here. And hopefully that can continue through to the league as well. Hogg picks up the ball in midfield. Running at the defence. Whitcomb picks it up from him. Smith shoots and it's over the bar. But it's certainly looking really positive this against Team Solon. What league are they in? Southern League Division 1 South. I think that might be the same level. 169. I think it is the same tier as us, yeah, 169. So yeah, it's proof that this won't be an easy game because obviously we're, we're newcomers at this tier as well. Whitcomb, can't quite get that in. But certainly if we could win this easily, which it's at the moment we're all over them, then it would be a really good win for us. But 
but certainly I don't think it's going to be easy to be honest. Shaw gets the ball away. Aaron Sibia shoots and Jones really should have saved that. A poor bit of goalkeeping. That's a real shame. But still, we have looked positive. I think we've we have been the better team here. We're a little unlucky, I think, to be drawing. The one to Aaron Sibia, there's a player I've seen before. Norwich City, there you go. Hasn't really gone well for him, has it, since being at Norwich? Lindstrom, crossed in, it's out, and we might be on the defensive here, and Sibia Isherwood clears up beautifully, really good defending there, and Joyce finds Smith, Wickham in the middle, and it's 2-1, Javan Smith and, uh, and Troy Wickham really combining well there, really impressive, right, quick on the break, that's good to see, that's why I want, want my teams to play, is really hit the teams on the break, Part of the reason why pace is so crucial. I've been training uh, Javan's uh, quickness up, and as you can see, they're pretty good for this level now. Not well, Javan, Troy. Um, Javan's quite quick, I think, but yeah, he's still fairly quick. But Troy Wickham in particular, really, really quick. And that is something that really does suit our, our style of play. Pleased with how things are going, definitely. 2 1 up. Gonna stay positive. It'd be, like, be nice to get another goal and kind of almost put this tie to bed, really. Okoro shoots unnecessarily. I don't really know why he shot there. Troy Wickham really finding some form after a slow start to the season. But he's uh, he's really hitting his top form now, which is good to see because he's he certainly has been dipping. Second half of last season, he he wasn't as good, um, and it's good to see him sort of finding his form again. Because he was obviously he's such a massive. Such a huge kind of hope for me at the start of last season. I thought he would be really the difference maker. He didn't really turn out to be. It was Javan Smith, if anything, who was the kind of catalyst to promotion. Uh, but maybe Whitcomb can step up this year with the uh, with the move up. It could be, it could easily be that it just that he couldn't really hit his his heights when you were when he was playing in a, a division too low. Right. Okay. It's now really just a question of seeing this out. So, so I'm going to bring off Luke Hogg. Uh, bring on Ryan Smith. I think, yeah, I was tempted to go for Berkhamshaw, but the thing is, he's so much more suited to being the attacking player that I want to bring on someone who's a bit more capable of doing defensive, even though um, even Smith is kind of more um, more suited to the attacking role. He's a little bit more capable of playing the defensive one. I'll bring on Johnson for a Coro. He's played well, but it's just an easy substitution to make. Into five minutes of stoppage time now, but Smith brings it forward. Smith, Smith for Smith, and Jellyman on the outside. Cross to Wickham, and it's 3 1. Nice and secure. A hat trick as well for Troy Wickham. Perfect hat trick, I think. I saw it down there as well. Perfect hat trick for Troy. Um, it's fantastic to see. Um, and yeah, as I say, good to see him kissing some form finally. And just uh, question now of waiting for the full time whistle and seeing us through to the next round a bit of extra cash oh that could have made it a couple of iffy minutes but no easy nice save from the keeper there and another one some some th late threat from team silent but i think we are now going to see this out smith again over to reed wrestle ref whistle it's time we're through and that is it. Simon, uh, Troy Whitcomb being s been absolutely fantastic today. 9.5 average ra uh, rating there. Good to see Jellyman getting something there. That's good. Jimmy Moran as well. So both my right-sided players really having an, an influence in that game. As well as Javan Smith tying nicely up with Troy. Really, really good performance. Very pleasing to see. And I will be back with you sometime later in October. Uh, decide to show you one one league game to be decided. It'll be one of these four, I think. Uh, but which one you will find out in a moment. A little bit of a bonus here. Um, I just had a, had an inkling that we might be able to do something about this. Troy Whitcomb has now signed a one-year further contract extension, and more than that, he's done it at a slightly reduced wage. So I'm really impressed with that. The appearance fees and goal bonuses are smallish, uh, so not particularly worried about that. We will probably avoid relegation, so I'll have to pay him that. But that's fine. It, be absolutely worth it so I think that was a, a good bit of business to get done to keep him for another year he's a player who should be good enough I think for at least a couple of have I just yes for at least a couple of uh, tiers higher than this I hope 
Uh, as I say, he's, he, he was off form at the beginning of the season, but he seems now to be back backfiring, and he also is improving still at 19 years old with 14 determination. There's no reason why he can't be absolutely fantastic for this side for quite a long time to come. So really, really pleased with that. Um, sorry, that was an unexpected little um, diversion for you, but I will be back with that um, game shortly. Welcome back, um, and as you can see, we're here a little earlier than perhaps I was originally thinking. I just felt that Trafford seemed to me to be the, the kind of the, the, the most obvious one to do. It also meant that I could get it um, recorded this evening, which uh, we're on. We're on. I'm recording this on Monday night, uh, so I'm a, I'm a little ahead of myself now, which is why you're getting a lot of double live comms at the moment. I'm going to hopefully keep that going, and that will become, if not the norm, then certainly more common. Um, I've already actually decided what my next one is going to be. I might as well tell you now. I'll probably end up reminding you at the end. Uh, my next live com will be. I'm, I'm kind of assuming that I'll win this. If I don't, then I'll need to rethink it. But if I'm if assuming I win this, then it will be the um, the next round of this game plus Skelmersdale, which I don't think will be back to back, but it will be close enough together that it makes sense. I think. Uh, the reason I've gone for Skelmersdale was just because if you remember, they were a team that kind of held us up a little bit. Uh, a couple of years ago, they got promoted at our expense um, two years ago. So it's sort of a bit of a rivalry there, um, and I feel like that could be something that might sort of ignite and become a real rivalry. I wonder if we've got any rivalries yet. I don't actually know. I haven't checked this. Um, fierce rival? No, no, no rivals at all. We've got a couple of icons in Smith and Waterhouse, favourite personnel, Finley Hayhurst, and myself, which is always nice. Um, so yeah, um, fair enough, I think. John Smith got become an icon quite quickly, which is impressive. I'm slightly sad that Finley Hayhurst isn't an icon, at least. Uh, I, d I, d I agree that he's not a legend yet. I think Waterhouse might be getting there. If he, if he can get a few goals this year, um, I think he's, he's fast approaching legendary status at this club, uh, given what he did in the first season and, and last year as well. Um, he's certainly been a very good player for us. But here we go. Um, we have Trafford is the, uh, the game that we have playing today. Harry Burke was short. Oh, I, I, this, you'll notice this is a bit of a rotated side. No, it wasn't. That was it was for the last game. Um, Harry Burke was short, though. I don't think I do want in the side. I'm going to go for Lundstrom. No, I'm not going to go for Lundstrom. He's more of a left-sided player anyway. Uh, I think I will stick with Burke was short, actually. Um, just can't think there's anyone. Jazz Casey obviously is um, not fit for this. You see that some players here who played who played a, a cup game recently just because I wanted to rotate and keep players fresh and fresh and so on. I'm just slightly worried about Burkham Shaw's fitness. Um, that said, I don't think there's really anything to be done. Um, I think he, I am going to go with Burkham Shaw for this game. Uh, Hogg, as you can see, has been playing a little bit better. The centre midfield has been a little bit of an issue for us. Um, as has the defence, but then it was a step up this season, it was always bound to be, and the fact that the strikers have been doing really well is just really symptomatic of the fact that they're very, both very good players. Joanne Smith has, has just has surprised me, I have to say, but he is, he is a good player. Um, and Troy Whitcomb, well, coming good, um, a player who always was going to come good, I think. So here we go, with the second live call of the episode. Um, Alderhouse, at home. And those are the two teams. Any players I recognise here? I don't think so. Always worth looking out for. But no, I don't think there are on this occasion. Uh, let's carry on where we left off last game. I've got faith in you to keep winning. Keep winning. Please keep winning. That would be nice. And we're off. Maguire. We'll win today and we might even make it up into the um, the playoff spots, which would be extraordinarily nice. I think they're fairly simple playoffs in this division. I know later on it gets quite complicated with sort of um, lower teams playing each other and then playing off for the right to play other teams uh, a bit higher. But I think with this league it's fairly simple. Just need to check the rules. And yes, it looks like it's just a semi final and a final jobby. We're on the attack, but I've lost the ball. That was a poor throw in. Hopefully, we're not going to get caught on the break here. The shape looks okay. Now we're putting them under a bit of pressure. I think it's an unnecessarily long eye like this, but Wick can pick the ball up. Out to Akinola. Can he get across in? No, he can't. Finds the first man, but Okoro can. Smith has a good shot. Um, 
don't know, quite know why he didn't re react to that. Maybe he was given offside. I'm not sure. Akinola swings across in. Berkham Shaw on the edge of the box. Back out to Akinola and Smith is there. He's having a couple of chances already. This would be a nice win to keep us significantly clear of Trafford. Akinola swing another cross in. Whitcomb over to Smith, but the ball is cleared. Berkham Shaw. Hog shoots and that's over the bar. We're having all the play at the moment. Berkham Shaw over to Moran. Hog shoots and that's over as well. We're having a lot of, sh of shots from distance. I'd like to see us just work the ball into the box a little more. I might just give him that instruction, I think. Don't always do that, but I just think at the moment we're on top. So let's try and create some better chances rather than sh shooting on sight. And then I say that and Connor Thompson just swings the ball in. Connor Thompson, I feel like I've had him before. Spell. Not in this game, obviously. Don't remember. Um, it's another example of these ridiculously good free kicks, which at this level just seems a bit silly. Because how often do you see them? It's a sort of once a season per league job, really, that kind of goal. And yet I see, seem to see them every few weeks. And Smith's in here. Can we make it 1 1? No. Good save by the goalkeeper there, Kendrick. Canola crosses in, and Smith's there again, and that's another good save from the goalkeeper. Is it going to be one of those days where you just can't get past a really good goalkeeper? Thompson swings the ball in, and Smith is there, and we're 2-0 down. This is worrying not looking very good at the back. We, we are good going forward. I like this team going forward. But we're going to have to, I think I'm going to have to sort of bite the bullet and just find some better defenders. I like Brad Wilde a lot. I really do. I made him captain this season. I really like him and he is still improving. But I'm not convinced by him now. Um, and Isherwood, Isherwood, kind of similar. Oh, We've got, we've got to defend better, it's as simple as that. If we're going to be able to really make a splash in this league, I mean, I still don't think we're going to go down. And the truth is, we're probably not going to get, get um, promoted whatever we do this season. So it might not be worth... Oh, what did I do there? I wasn't thinking. That was dumb. Just tell them I believe in them. It'll help a little bit. It won't be enough because I made a big mistake. You don't tell them. You don't tune all down at half-time and tell them that you've done done well. That's really daft. That said, I'm quite glad that people are switching off when I say things like that because that shows that they... They know that they're better than that. But still, only three overall bad reactions, which is good, despite that mistake. And they've got a corner, and it's three. We're absolutely a bit getting mullered here. I think it's time to just be a bit more cautious. And just damage limitation here. We're not going to get anything out of this game now. Um, this is really disappointing. Um, I don't... I guess it's one of those non-league things where you just have games where it just it goes wrong, which is fine. Um, and we have been on a pretty decent run recently, to be fair. If you look at our uh, our recent fixtures, that's like that's my tactics. Um, oh dear, I don't even want to look at this anymore. But if you look at our recent fixtures, um, we've had four wins in a row. Admittedly, one of those, no, two of those are in the cup. Uh, but even in the league, three wins out of four a really really good return in a league that we've just been promoted to so it's no it's by no means a disaster this but it is a disappointment um, and obviously something we're going to need to try and put right in the next few weeks but it ain't going to happen in this game i can tell you that four nil down it's barely just barely after half time uh, it's time to really go very very defensive and just try not to concede too many more it's a shame off because he's knackered. Jake Thompson, come on. Jellyman also coming off with a really, really poor game. Uh, actually, I can't really bring him off. There's no one I can play in right on the right wing. 
Oh, sorry, Alid, you're going to have to stay on despite very poor fitness. No, there's not really anyone I can bring off that's worthwhile bringing off. Forget it, just let them carry on. Um, it's just, yeah, it's obviously to be expected to some extent, but to lose 4 0, it's not really ideal. Yeah, as compared to some of the disappointments of the last couple of years before this before this promotion, it's nothing. But um, I'm not quite sure why we're getting absolutely thumped by this team, because they should be roughly at our level. Uh, they, they're in the rough position that we're pred predicted to finish in this year. But they kind of seem that we should be really pushing close at least, and maybe winning sometimes. As I say, a one-off game is not the end of the world by any means, but it's a really disappointing way to lose a game. I don't mind losing, but I do mind losing in such a pathetic way. As at home as well, um, it's not good. So I think it needs to be quite aggressive. This I'm not happy with that result. And they are clearly motivated to do better. Why are you stressed, Lisherwood? Is it because you're not good enough? I think it might be. At least the rest can see that they need to improve. Really, really poor performance there, um, and it makes me quite glad that we didn't do the Atherton Colliers game because that might have been quite embarrassing based on that that performance. And obviously, we're going to be a bit tired as well, playing only three days later. Um, it's a really sour note to end the episode, really, um, and I'm disappointed to have to do that. Uh, but hopefully, I'll be back tomorrow with a rather better performance. I suppose uh, we will be in the FA Trophy again, um, and. Uh, we will then also play Skelmsdale, and that will then be quite a big game, really. Uh, it'll be a game that I will be very keen to win against a team that, at least to me, is starting to feel like a bit of a rival. They did, as I said earlier, they, they denied us promotion a couple of years ago. So they're a team that I would like to get some revenge on, because I think if we'd been if we'd been in the uh, this league a year earlier, it would have been very nice, um, but wasn't to be. I will see you tomorrow. Um, and in the meantime, if there's anything you'd like to see, as I've said many times, just just ask. Keep um, commenting. Uh, any, any comments I see, I will mention something in the next video. It may not be the next day because I often record a few days in advance. Uh, but I will endeavour to ensure to get your question answered, assuming it's still relevant, as soon as I can. And I will at least acknowledge anyone who does ask a question, even if I know that the um, question has been answered by the time you're going to see that video. Really disappointing performance. Whitcomb, yeah, well, I was furious. I shouldn't really be telling people about that either, Simon. Uh, Troy, sorry. Um, good to see that they're all very happy, though. Um, I think overall things are going fairly well. In fact, I might go and tell them as much. That perhaps it could be going better, but that I'm pretty pleased overall with the way that things are going. I'm just thinking about the, uh, the kind of team that I'm going to need for my next game. Keep Blakeman on the bench. Um, is it time for a team meeting, perhaps? I think after a decent run like that, and you lose a game in that sense, I think it's important to just make sure it doesn't become a rot. So I think it's time to do this. Doing okay. Not that I'm playing really well when we just got spanked like that, but generally we are doing okay. I think that's that's true. And yes, they they do agree with me. Uh, I'm really pleased with that, and they are loving that, loving life. And you can see managerial support really good, good adjusting atmosphere and cohesion. It bodes well that we might see that that's just a, a very temporary blip, and that we can get back to something. I mean, Atherton Collieries will not be an easy game, but if we can avoid getting absolutely thumped there, I'll be pretty happy, and, and then we can come back and win uh, a couple of games, hopefully against Stadebridge, Celtic, and Marine. Um, both of those are teams that should be beatable, I think. Steady Bush Celtic would be a harder game. Yeah, they're up here. Uh, but if we are serious about pushing for the playoffs, which I'd like to do, you know, I, I think I guess I think realistically my kind of range of where I think we'll probably finish this year is between about fifth and tenth, which means that top end we'd we'd, we'd get into the playoffs. I don't think we're ever going to be any, anywhere near challenging for the promote for the automatic promotion. But if we could finish fifth, I'd be absolutely delighted. I do think that's the top end. But it is certainly a possibility if we can, and I think we're going to probably need to buy a defender or two uh, in order to do that. One thing I will do, I think, is see if I can get my scouts to find someone along those lines. 
because I think a centre back is starting to look quite important at the moment. I was looking for left backs, but I don't think they've really managed to find anyone. This guy looked quite good. Actually, he looked very good. I've tried to get him a couple of times. He doesn't seem particularly interested, but I might just give it one last go. Um, see what happens. He might have seen that we're kind of holding our own in this league and therefore be a bit more interested than he would otherwise have been. But I think he is certainly the left back that I would like to have. So I'm going to get rid of that assignment and have. Uh, oh, I what, what, what the position is it? Who's he looking for? He's looking for various ones. I can get rid of the left back one. I think I found the one, the left back I want. There are probably central midfielders that I need, and I will get Danny Gibbons continuing to look for a centre back who is a first team player. Um, quite urgently, really. I think we need that to be done as soon as because we really do need um, a centre back that is going to improve this side. Um, and sadly, Mac Michael Headley hasn't seen doesn't seem to have sold, found any yet. Disappointing. Where's that come from? No, I don't want Michael Headley doing that. Oh, okay. I see what's happened. Uh, I think I'm going to cancel that because it's more important that he looks at those that those players there. Those are the ones I want. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely what I want. So Danny Gibbons looking for a central defender. Michael Headley looking for a few different positions, but that central defender is certainly the um, the absolute priority now. Uh, and Joe Smith continuing to look for left backs, but I think I found the player I want in that position. So that's all looking good, and hopefully tomorrow y you will come back to a bit more news, perhaps about a player I've signed uh, to really push that team to its next level. But certainly, ooh, ooh. I want to find out a bit more, but he looks interesting too. That be, it might be another option uh, to improve that left back position. How do I continue scouting him? I want to scout him more. How do I? Yeah, here. Uh, design scout, scouting pool, and top full knowledge. I want to find out a bit more about him. Uh, but yeah, it's certainly looking promising uh, in terms of a few players I might be able to get in. Joe Mead, not convinced. Hopefully, we might be able to find better than him. Although, again, I will just make sure I find out the full amount about him. Um, and I wonder if I can get that, this guy, uh, Kieran Thomas Corner. No, nah, I don't think he looks very good. All these kind of players who might be able to improve the side, um, and obviously that's always something I'm going to be looking for. So hopefully you will come back next episode, and there will be a couple of players uh, in some key positions, perhaps on the left wing, perhaps in the I think left wing, central midfield, and central defence are the three player places at the moment. Plus, oh, and left back as well. Um, so three, there are three. Central defence, left back, left wing. Uh, they're the three areas at the moment. Oh, and sorry, yes, yeah, four. And central midfield. So <coughs> centrally and left, both cent both defence and midfield. They're the, they're the two that I really need to look for. Um, and I would hope by kind of January time, I might be able to find players in those four positions, four positions that have improved the the first team. Um, so that's kind of the the goal um, by then. By January, four new players, centre back, left back, centre midfield, left midfield, um, and that might be enough to kind of get us propel us towards a, a, um, a playoff spot. Fingers crossed, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye for now.